Woe to the teachers of the law, the day of the saints is here. Woe to the teachers of the law, the kingdom of God is Welcome once again to God News Network, where the flesh meets the spirit and the saints are rising, where we are here to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to the saints. Are you a saint? How do you find out? That's by listening here at God News Network. We want to thank you again for tuning in to God News Network on this beautiful July 5th after a very splendid July 4th, which is our freedom. Do you have real freedom? Do you have true freedom? Do you know how to get real freedom? Fortunately, we don't have to pay the ultimate price that so many did prior in the past to where we celebrate July 4th. I give out all honor to those men and women who are of the armed forces and military for the United States of America who are on the front line each and every day giving their lives. And we want to thank you from God News Network for all of you. We honor you today. And most of all at our household here at St. Rick's household, We honor Jesus Christ, who is the ultimate soldier who gave his life for each and every one of us on this planet. Just because you haven't received him yet doesn't mean he didn't die for you. It's kind of like you buy a gift for someone. They may not have received it yet, but you still bought the gift. That's correct. You still purchased the gift. And it's the same exact way for us for Jesus Christ. He paid the ultimate price and he also took the infirmities, which are diseases upon himself on our behalf. Today, we've got some great news that we're going to be looking at. Very detailed here. We're going to be looking at some world news first on a very surface level and then we're going to be diving into some crazy things there's always mysteries going on does everybody know that mysteries going on around the world in different areas and things that you don't hear about on the bubblegum news is what i call it it's the bubblegum news i remember back in the day when we were playing music that was a little bit heavier than i do today and we would hear some pop music on and we would call it bubblegum music Well, I kind of took that into what I consider to be the bubblegum news. If you really kind of jump around from Fox to CNN, MSNBC, you'll pretty much find three to five stories that are constantly floating around that I call bubblegum news that are being spoon fed to them from, who knows, the mystery people. We have mystery people out there that seem to make some decisions and call some shots. And just like people don't know how money is created here in the U.S., it's just a mystery how money is created. Well, not at God News Network. If you pay attention and you listen, we know those answers here because we have done the research on your behalf. For example, some of the cool headlines that you won't hear. Tom DeLay, everybody might remember him. He was uh, from the Justice Department, wants to legalize 12 perversions. Former U.S. House Majority Leader Tom DeLay claims the Justice Department has drafted a memo that spells out a dozen perversions, including bestiality, pedophilia, that it warrant once legalized. We found a secret memo coming out of the Justice Department. They're now going to go after 12 new perversions, things like bestiality, polygamy, so on and so forth. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It is truly becoming a world controlled by evil. 
some of the things that were good are being called evil, and some of the things that are evil are being called good. Does that ring a bell with anybody else out there? Is anyone else listening, paying attention to this stuff? We are here at God News Network. ISIS expansion. You know, we talk about ISIS over in the Middle East, right? But what people may not know is our southern border is long, and U.S. Border Patrol agents work to fight illegal activities like illegal immigration, drugs, and now, according to an FBI consultant, the border could be an attractive region for ISIS thanks to part or in part to powerful drug lords. Drug dealers have found a way to move money without it being followed. Interesting. Some of the news and mysteries that are out there, right? How do they do that without it being followed? Well, there's kind of a cool map that I found on a gentleman who I listen to every once in a while named Rick Wiles at truenews.com. He is uh, really good at getting some information <laughs> that I can't seem to find in other areas, and it's amazing how they pull this information up. But drugs are headed for the street uh, here in the U.S. are um, basically they're finding ways to move that in here into the United States without it being traced or followed. And there's tunnels. They've got all of these tunnels, and these tunnels could easily be an underground highway for ISIS to spawn its brutality here. The stronger they get over there, the more power they have. So I can definitely see in the future collaboration between terrorist groups and drug dealers in our south or our southern border. And this came from uh, Senator Lindsey Graham from South Carolina, who is a 2016 presidential candidate. That's an amazing thing. Federal government to step up bird flu monitoring this fall. And you guys might remember the story of those Christian bakers. They were actually that uh, refused to make wedding cakes for lesbians. They were fined $135,000. Hmm. The South China Sea is now a core interest of Beijing. That's a problem for its neighbors. Greek banks down to $500 million in cash reserves as their economy crashes. There's people who would go to an ATM machine. They can't get their money. It, it's gone over there. When is that coming to the U.S.? All of these mysteries floating around, right? The Bible. You know, it's where the flesh meets the spirit. There's the flesh side of things. The Bible has mysteries. But these mysteries are eternal. In other words, they have eternal consequences. They have eternal effects. The world news has a flesh effect. You know, that's all that can be affected is your flesh. Your spiritual can't be affected if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For example, we're going to go to... 1 Timothy chapter 3. That's 1 Timothy chapter 3. And what's interesting in 1 Timothy in chapter 3 is Timothy is one of the studies of Paul. And of course, everybody knows Paul wrote two thirds of the New Testament and wrote what was applicable to us who were Gentiles now in the church because we've accepted Christ, but not to the Jews. His, his mission wasn't to the Jews. His mission was to everybody on the planet, where the other apostles, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all those, they were to whom? Peter, James, they were all to the Jews. Matthew chapter 10 tells you that because Jesus directed them not to go unto the Gentiles, only to the Jews. I think it was 10, 5. This is a true saying. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. If, um, says a bishop, then must be blameless. How do you become blameless? How do you become blameless? 
Only through Christ can we become blameless because the flesh isn't blameless. Your thoughts are not blameless because there's three, three things at work with your thoughts. Some you're responsible for. Some just pop in there and you go, where in the world did that come from? That's the enemy. And then some are directly from God. And you go, man, I'm glad that that came to my mind. Right? A bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife. And unbeknownst to popular or unpopular belief here, you'll notice that the husband of one wife doesn't mean that you've been divorced before. It means you just have one wife at a time. So you have one wife. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Verse 3, not given to wine. No, not a striker, not greedy, a filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, and not covetous. Their character is not one who just does bad things. How does one know it's an apple tree? The fruit of the tree is an apple. How does one know it's an orange tree? The fruit of the tree are oranges. If someone, if an apple tree produces all these apples and all of a sudden it has a bad apple, that's an anomaly, not a normal thing. Well, it's the same way with us. If you're normally not given to wine or strike or greedy or filthy lucre, but you are a patient person, not a brawler, not covetous, at your natural, you can be this bishop. One that ruleth well in his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. In other words, not someone who's a newbie to be a bishop. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise, must be deacons, be grave, not, you know, double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy or filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And it goes on to give you some more things. These things I write unto thee. I'm going down to verse 14 now. These things I write unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, if I wait too long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. The mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. This is really a really good verse. People argue, was God actually in the flesh? Here it is. God was manifest in the flesh through Christ. That's it. There it is. One of the great mysteries of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles. There it is, Paul believed on in the world and received up into glory. Isn't that awesome? That is a mystery. I love that. I think that is awesome there. That's one of the mysteries that we're looking at, right? So now we're going to go find another mystery. This one here is in Mark. So we're going to go to Mark. And when we go to Mark, we're going to go to chapter 4. Let's look at chapter 4 to find another mystery. 
This one here actually goes down to verse 11, but he said to them in verse 11, and he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Let's go back and see what's going on in Mark chapter 4. Jesus, and he began again to teach by the sea. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. So Jesus is in the ship. But the multitude is on the sea or was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among the thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it. And it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground and it did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30 and some 60 and some a hundred and he said unto them he that hath ears to hear let him hear and when he was alone they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable he said unto them unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of god but unto them that are without all these things are done in parables that seeing they may see, that perceive, and not perceive. So in other words, they may see, but not perceive. And hearing, they may hear, and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted. There it is. So how do we begin to understand the parables of God? It's to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And it says, and, and uh, lest at any time they shall be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. So once you're converted, your sins will be forgiven immediately. And he said unto them, know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. So when you're sharing the word of God with people, Satan comes and snatches the word away from some of them. And these are they likewise, which are sown on the stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time afterward when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake immediately they are offended so they're hurt something happens and they're offended when the word comes and they can't handle it they believe as long as there's no troubles in their lives or persecution in their lives. That's a mystery that most will fall, you know, that, that can't, that don't have that root. Verse 18, Mark four eighteen, And these are they that which are sown among the thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it become unfruitful. You get the word, 
Satan knows, hey, he's got the word. I know I'm going to shower him with things and keep him so busy. And it starts choking out the word out of them. And they say, you know, I used to go to church, but I don't. Or I used to study, but I don't. I used to pray, but I don't. Those things happen in your life and you allow the enemy to choke those out, right? So that's what happens. And these are they, verse 20, these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye measure, it shall be measured unto you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. So if you start to hear and you start to hear these mysteries of God and you and you can't seem to get enough, you're going to hear more. For he that hath to him shall be given and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he had. And he said, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like the grain of a mustard seed, which, when it is sown into the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. And with many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. <laughs> The mysteries of the Bible keep growing and growing. That's what makes them so awesome. Is they just keep growing and growing. Romans. Next one is Romans. We're going to go to Romans. Romans 11. That is Romans chapter 11. And we're going to go down to verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. There is another mystery. To get to that one, I'm going to back up a little bit. We're going to go to... Mm-hmm. Let's go to 11.13. Yep, Romans 11.13. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. So here's Paul taking full authority unto the Gentiles, letting them know that he is an apostle of the Gentiles and he magnifies his office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. 
For if the casting away of them be the reconciliation of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? And he's talking about the he's talking about the Jews. So this is when the message left the Jews and now went to the Gentiles. He's kind of talking about that. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. In other words, he's explaining that if they were cut off and you were grafted in through Christ, how much easier will it be? It says here in eleven eighteen, boast not against the, the branches that were broken off, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, because the root doesn't boast. The, how can you boast in any way, shape, or form? Because it had nothing to do with you. It was Jesus Christ that grafted you in. Jesus Christ gave you eternal salvation, not you, not your efforts, not what you did, not how many times you went to church, not how many times you read the Bible. It was what Jesus Christ did on the cross. That's why we can't boast, because it's not us. It's not St. Rick. It's not his ability. It is what God did. God loved you so much that he gave his only son to die on the cross for you. 1119. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. It says in verse 20, 1120. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off and thou standest by faith. So you stand by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not you. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell. Severity, but toward thee, you, goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shalt be cut off as well. So you're going to be cut off if you don't continue in his goodness. How do we do that? By faith. It's simply by faith. You can't continue in his goodness by works. How many people did you talk to today? The pastor may say, or someone may say to you, it has nothing to do with that. It's truly, truly by grace. 1123. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief shall be grafted in. So in other words, they can be grafted in as well if they don't stay in unbelief. For God is able to graft them in again through belief, through faith in Jesus Christ. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Christ was a Jew. He's the root. They can graft, it, graft back in by believing. These are the parables, which are mysteries. Romans eleven twenty five. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. It's the completeness. That's what the word means, completeness. Verse 26. And so all Israel shall be Saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Sion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. When did he do that? At the cross. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, 
yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so, have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, exclamation point. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever amen what a great mystery i love that for of him and through him and to him are all things of him are all things through him are all things and to him are all things to whom be glory forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. That is just a, you know, what can we say? That's just a great mystery, right? Another awesome mystery. We're going to go this time again to Romans, but this time we're going to go to chapter 16 in the big book of Romans. And when we get to chapter 16 this time, we're going to slide down to verse 25. Let's take a read of verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. He calls it his gospel. Paul calls it his gospel. And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. There it is. What is the obedience? It's the obedience of faith. Not obedience of the law and the commandments and Levitical laws, regulations, rules. It's obedience of faith. Here's what I contend. It is of faith. It is of grace. If you truly say that you follow Jesus Christ of faith, but still decide to cause harm, my question is this. Is it really an apple tree? Is it producing apples? Are all the apples rotten? If it is a rotten tree, that is a motive issue that Jesus will judge and God, not us. We have an obligation to love. That is our only obligation. It is to love. To love and care for everyone. That's, that's why, you know, Jesus tells us, turn the other cheek. Give him your tunic also. If someone asks you for the coat, the shirt off your back, give him that and, the, and your coat. It's love. To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. That's verse 27. So be, we're back on 26, Romans 16, 26. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of their everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. So you're obedient to the faith. That's what it is. 
<laughs> and you know what's really interesting? I love the way that it says obedience of faith. Because whose faith was it? Romans 3.22 says it very clearly. It was the faith of Jesus Christ. If your Bible says faith in Christ, that is incorrect. That was a misinterpretation and a mistranslated book. If you go back to the original scrolls, it's the, it is the obedience of the faith, or it's the faith of Jesus Christ, not faith in Jesus Christ. If you're just now hearing this for the first time, we have earlier episodes that deal with that. And goes into it much in detail. Today we're studying the mysteries of the Bible. There's another mystery. Another one that is just absolutely awesome. (laughs) I love the mysteries of the Bible. Don't you? Yes. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians. But we speak now in 1 Corinthians. We're going to go to chapter 2. And we're going to go to verse 7. Chapter 2, verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. What's really interesting there, he goes on. He says, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen, and that's E-Y-E, nor ear heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now, We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Yes, that includes you if you've accepted Jesus Christ. If you've accepted Jesus Christ, if you seek, he will give to you. If you knock, it shall be opened. You will hear if you listen. It is an amazing thing. How many are really seeking? How many are really knocking? Or are we not knocking? Are we not seeking? I contend that most of the world is not. They're seeking selfish things. I'm not here to give you a hard time, but it's a fact. We do seek selfish things. We need to seek heavenly things. God is... He's going to come one of these days and you're going to be thinking, I wish I had more money. No, that's not going to cross your mind. Weep not. Run the race. Fulfill your purpose. God has put you here for a purpose. He has put you here for purpose. A purpose. So verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom. Which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Hmm. Another mystery. I love the mysteries of God. They are so awesome. First Corinthians. This is another one. And this one here is going to get into some really cool stuff because we're into 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If if you're looking here, right? We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we're going to fly down to verse 51. This one's really cool. They're all really cool, but this one's really cool too. 
Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Now the word sleep there, when we look it up in interlinear, let's do that real quick. We shall not all sleep. Here it is. Strong's G2837, which is the word... Strong's G2837, Koimao. Yeah, it's Koimao. Koimao. Koimao, right? Strong's G2837, Koimao. To cause to sleep, put to sleep, metaphor, to still, to calm, to quiet, to fall asleep, to sleep, to die. That's what it means, to die. Okay? So when we read this in context... We read it. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible, which is the flesh, must put on incorruptible, which is your or incorruption, which is your new body. And this mortal, which is the flesh, must put on immortality. So when this corruptible, your flesh, shall have put on the incorruption, which is the new body, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Where does the law, where does sin get its strength? It is in the law. And what is the law? The law is the commandments, the rules, the regulations. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law, because the law is used to point out your sin. And the sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So you don't have to be concerned if you're a believer. You have been given this victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You don't have to worry if your labor is in vain. It's not. It is not in vain in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that is the last enemy to be put under the feet of Jesus Christ, which is death. And that will be done at the last trump. It's what it says right here. It's the last trumpet. I take it literally. That means, you know, you got the seven trumpets of revelation, the last trump. There it is. (laughs) It's beautiful. Another great, awesome mystery of the Bible. Let's go to Ephesians 1, 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasures, which he hath purposed in himself. What is the mystery of his will in Ephesians 1, 9? Let's take a look at that. First of all, let's start. Up at the top, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints, which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus here at God News Network. We we preach to you saints around the world. (laughs) I love it. Verse two, grace be to you and peace from God, our father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. 
that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. We were chosen before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blame before him in love. And that occurred at the cross. Yes, praise you, Jesus Christ. Praise you, God in heaven, for sending your son. Hallelujah. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. It's just because of the good pleasure of his will, not because you're this awesome person. We know that isn't true. At least it is for St. Rick prior to Jesus Christ. And I'm sure it is for you as well, unless you have the ability to boast in your efforts. Good luck with that one. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. That would be Jesus. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we've obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted. After that, ye heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed. Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And I love how it's capitalized because it's a he. That's awesome. What another great mystery. The Bible's full of incredibly awesome mysteries. And they're all for your goodness. They're all for your benefit. Ephesians 3. Verse 3, Ephesians 3, verse 3. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. He's talking about Paul, the mystery of Jesus Christ, what he's done for us. Ephesians 3, 4. Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. 3, 9. And to make all men see... What is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the word hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ? (laughs) It goes on and on and on. I love it. And Ephesians 6, 19, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me. Paul saying that, utterance may be given unto him that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Ephesians six 19. Let's go there. Ephesians six 19. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds and therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. And he goes on to talk about to keep our Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord shall make known to you all things. Utterance speak boldly about Jesus Christ. May you speak boldly about Jesus Christ. May you speak boldly about the gospel. Let those who are around you know the time is short. 
and I love this. This is how we open up every show here at God News Network. Colossians 1.26, even the mystery which hath been hidden from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. That's you if you're a believer. If you're not, all you have to do is ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and say, I believe upon Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that he died on the cross. I believe that he was buried and I believe that he rose three days later and had victory at that that point and took upon him all sin and all disease for all of us. He took it on himself. And I believe and I receive that in the name of Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome? And it goes on in 127, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 2, 2, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. Colossians 4, 3. With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. Second Thessalonians 2, 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And this is somebody holding back. Let's go to let's go to Second Thessalonians chapter two. This one's going to take a little bit more explanation. Okay, here we are. The Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse seven. But let's go back up a little bit. Now we beseech you, brethren. We're going to go to verse one. Now we beseech you. Brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Now, so he's talking about, I want to discuss about Jesus coming here. Okay. I'm going to talk about Jesus Christ coming. And he says that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is Lord is at hand. In other words, I'm not saying the day of Jesus is here now. This is what Paul is saying back then. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except, here comes the exceptions, in case you're wondering about this great mystery, when Jesus comes. There has to come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That is whom? The Antichrist. He's also called the son of perdition. He's not been revealed yet. There's some candidates out there. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but he's not been revealed yet. And there has to come a great falling away. And he has to be revealed. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. So this guy, this son of perdition, is going to exalt himself above all that is called God. Or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So he's going to claim to be God in the temple. That has not occurred, so we don't have to wonder about Jesus coming yet. So until these things occur, he's not coming. Some people believe in the pre-trib rapture and you know i've been back and forth on this thing a few times myself but as we read earlier in first corinthians chapter fifteen fifty one, at the last trump those things will occur i i keep going back to that for some reason i hope it's a pre-trib rapture but i can't get past that verse at the last trump the last trumpet that means there's these other trumpets well, the only place I can find that in the Bible where there's all these trumpets in a row is the seven trumpets, which is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's a great mystery. Let's keep going. 
who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that as he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. So he's now reminding him, saying, hey, I told you this stuff. That's why he's not coming now. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he now letteth will let until he is taken out of the way. So there's some spirit that is in the way and it's not taken out yet or the spirit's not taken out yet, but it will be. And then shall the wicked, the wicked be revealed. And it's that wicked. And then shall that wicked be revealed. And that wicked, wicked is capitalized. So it's a person. That's back to the son of perdition. Be revealed. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Even Christ whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Back to that tree thing, aren't we? See how that flows? But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. What is the truth? The truth is Jesus Christ died, buried, and was resurrected for you. Unto he called you by our gospel, the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions of which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father which has loved us, hath given us every everlasting consolation and good hope through our grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. The beautiful mysteries of God. Unreal. I love it. It's awesome. Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. 1 Timothy 3.9 1 Timothy 3.16 And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. We kind of read that earlier. Revelation. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou saw are the seven churches. And he's dealing with the prophecy there and going into how that works. And there's some more mysteries coming in Revelation, but this show, we're not going to cover those. We're going to continue those later on. The most ultimate mystery is Jesus Christ that the world has ever known. The love that he bestowed upon us because God loved us. That is, is the ultimate mystery of all time. That ultimate beautiful mystery that God bestowed upon us was our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, I am honored and humbled beyond belief that God allows me the opportunity to share the gospel, the greatest mystery of all time. It, it just confounds people who claim they're wise. You know, the world just dives in to so many things that goes on on a daily basis, but yet 
They let the mystery of God not be prevalent in their tongue, in their eyes, in their ears, constantly on their hearts. And God has a plan for you. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Have a blessed day.